Do y'all know it is finally tax season? It is. Now, normally I wouldn't be too excited about it, but I feel like it's the perfect time to learn. And then later in the show, we got like a finance expert. So it's like, she's gonna give us some money tips. So it's the perfect time for that. But I got a few fun facts for you to share about money. Child, I didn't know this. Where is my riches? Y'all took my money. Okay, I got my whole $10 right here. Yes, I do. Okay, did y'all know that, maybe y'all knew this, money ain't paper? Yo, you ain't know that, did you? <laughs> Shy, I didn't know. Okay, it's actually a, a blend of 75% cotton and 25% linen. I know, right? Now I see why I love money so much, because I love it like clothes, so it's like clothes. <laughs> Don't you think? I collect both. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, see? You didn't have no idea that. Okay, that's amazing to me. All right, let me smell it. Mm. So apparently it's made that way because fabric is more durable than paper. Because think about it, if you put paper in the washing machine, it's gonna wither away. And y'all know y'all keep money in some strange places. <laughs> don't act like you don't, okay? Because think about it. Okay, so I put my, my I can, you put your riches in the washing machine and it come out just fine. It's because it's material, like clothes. That blows my mind, I didn't know that. Okay, th this is another one. Every penny is worth one cent. But do you know how much it costs to make a penny? It costs two cents. Now make that make sense. <laughs> Why are we wasting this money on a penny, spending two cents to make one cent? Does that make sense to anybody? No. Did y'all, but did you know that though? I never thought that it costs money to make money. Ain't that a saying or something? <laughs> like you gotta spend money to make money? So it costs money to make money, but turns out that's real? Now, where's my last one? I got another fun fact. Apparently, pennies didn't all... Ooh, this is a good one. Pennies did not always stay in God we trust. Did you know that? Oh. Ain't you puzzled? Wait, guess what it used to say? Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your business! <laughs> Can you believe that? That's priceless. You know, and he wasn't being sassy. Like, Benjamin Franklin, I guess he put that on there, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. But yeah, but it was to me, like, legit, mind your business. Because if you mind your business, you're gonna make what? Some money. That's your money lesson of the day. Now that we got that underway, let me put my riches to the side. <laughs> Get this show started. Okay, let's get into my first guest. Over the past decade, he has built a widely successful business and has become one of HGTV's biggest stars. He tells his inspiring story in his new book called Flip Your Life, How to Find Opportunities in Distress. Please welcome Tarek El Musa. Come on out! <laughs> I am so happy to have you back. I know, we're just missing my better half today. Yes, how have you, I know you have a, you, you and your wife have a new baby now. Cause the last time you were here, was the baby just born? The, the baby was, was just born and believe it or not, he just turned a year old. Wow. Yeah, already. Oh my, how is he doing? Like, what is he into? I mean, he, he's, he's amazing and he's getting into everything. He, he's running around, crawling, running, throwing things, opening <laughs> cabinets and drawers. He loves pulling hair if you can't tell. <laughs> He's so cute. He is. And you have two older kids. So what is it like having a new baby in your 40s? Well, I finally feel like I'm ready to be a dad, you know? <laughs> oh, now you feel like you're ready to be a dad. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a different experience. You know, when, when I was in my 20s, when I had my daughter, yeah. I was young, I was building my business, I was overwhelmed, I was stressed out. Um, and you know, today I'm a, I'm a little more established, I'm a little older, I'm a little wiser, so it's a different experience and, and I'm really enjoying it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Cause now you can really embrace it and take it in. And then are your other two children helpful with the baby? 
Um, well, my daughter is definitely helpful. My son, we're getting there. You get near. There. He Not loves so much. It. He loves to play with his brother. He'll play with his brother all day long, but helping, that's questionable. Ah, uh, okay. And then, um, see, I'm a basketball mom. What sports are your kids into? Oh, basketball mom. I love that. I could play some ball, too. Yeah, so yeah. my son is his uh, first season in basketball, and it's his favorite sport. Oh, really? But he does jujitsu, basketball, and soccer. Uh, and then my daughter, Taylor, is just a super athlete. So she's just incredible at soccer and volleyball. Mm. What, do you, what do you think your baby is going to be into? Yeah, well, you know, he, he's, he's long and lean and lanky, like mom and dad with real long arms. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking baseball. I'm thinking baseball. Because oh, I loved baseball. Baseball was my sport. Are you already, like, teaching them little things? Yeah, believe it or not, yeah. Catch? Yeah, no, we're yeah. playing catch already, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, one day you may have to show us some of your skills. What you think about that? Don't get shot me now. I'm okay. In. Where's the baseball? Uh oh. Oh, you're really ready. We're always ready. Now, I ain't got no baseball right now. How has your wife been? I know, you know, she's like new into the, the space that you work in. So, how has she been with it all? You know, she, she's doing incredible. So, so, last year was season one of our show, The Flipping El Moose says, and, yeah. and her background is selling real estate. Now, selling real estate and designing and remodeling and building it's two different things, two different worlds. So, it was a big change for her. Uh -huh. But now, you know, we're, we, we're season two. She's done about 20 houses now. So, you know, she just tells me what to do now. Oh, she's telling around. you what to do now. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So she's clearly the boss, <laughs> boss at work. So she's caught on really yeah. well. Flip your life. Tell us about that. Yeah, oh, flip your life. You know, it, it's, it's my story. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's all about turning distress into opportunity, whether it's financial, physical, mental, it doesn't really matter what it is. And the book is kind of like a guide of what you can do to turn your, your life around. So mm -hmm. I'm someone that struggled with addiction, um, two-time cancer survivor, uh, different, you know, mental wow. health struggles. Thank you. And, um, and, I, and I just learned through, through all the pain that we go through in our lives, the only way to make it better is, is to get to work on a better future. So the book lays out a foundation and a plan on what someone can do to really turn their life around and start living that life they always wanted. I love how you're using your story yeah. to inspire others. Yeah, you know what, that's, and that's what I tell people. Like, my big thing is I tell people, I'm just a regular guy who did some really cool things, right? Yeah. Which shows that anything's possible. Mm -hmm. If I can do it, anybody can do it, right? That's, and that's how I see it. So, I, and, and really, I, I wrote that book for, for 20 year old Tark, you know. Um, and man, when I was 20 years old, it was a really, really rough period of my life. Mm -hmm. And if, if I had this book when I was 20, it would have helped me a lot. Wow, and it's gonna help so many other 20 year olds or people who are in that space of life. Absolutely. So, that's gonna be a blessing to many. Can you tell me, how did you get into real estate? That's a good question. So, anybody have Cutco kitchen knives? Oh, I, know, I think we lot. all do. So I used to sell Cutco kitchen knives. Really? Um, and this was back in like 2002, and there was no technology. So I had all my leads in a sales book. I lost my sales book. So I essentially put myself out of business. And I was at a, a Washington Mutual ATM in the city of Cerritos, California. Uh -huh. I'm looking at the machine that's laughing at me. <laughs> and I had what I like to call a defining moment. Uh -huh. And for me, a defining moment is one single impactful moment in your life that changes, changes the direction of your life. So in that moment, I said, man, what am I going to do? I threw my head back and I looked, and there was a crooked sign flapping in the wind. Mm. It said, wise old owl, real estate school. So then I thought to myself, if I can sell knives, I could probably sell houses. So I walked across the parking lot and I got started. Oh my goodness, so you went from knives to houses, That's and it. now look at where you are. Yeah. That was it. Wow, so television changed your life and it also saved your life. Because a viewer wrote in, tell us about that. Yeah, so um, season one of Flipper Flop aired 2013, and it was very early into filming season two. We had just started. I received an email, it said it was from the network that they received. All they said was, I'm a registered nurse, I noticed a lump on Tarek's neck, he should get it checked out. Now, I had gone to my normal doctor multiple times because I was always clearing my throat and I, I felt pressure in my neck. Mm. And they gave me um, allergy medicine and nose sprays, but they, they never did an ultrasound or biopsy or, or gave me a referral. So I, once I got that email, I was scared. You know, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to a different doctor. So they did a biopsy, came back as atypical, meaning it could or could not be cancer. They didn't know. So then I went for exploratory surgery, supposed to be an hour. Um, I woke up five hours later, and the first thing I saw was, you know, 
my ex-wife Christina looking down on me crying, and the first thing I said was, I have cancer, don't I? And she said yes. And that was, I found out I had cancer after they removed it when I woke up from the surgery. So because of that misdiagnosis, we looked through some old medical records and uh, noticed the irregular testicle exam a year before. So just to be safe, I went and got an ultrasound. Um, 20 minutes later, I found out I had testicular cancer. So it was thyroid cancer one week, uh, testicular cancer shortly after, and you know, I really, I really thought that was it for me. And I got a call from the network, you know, they said, we understand, the show's done, done, done. I said, this is not done, you're gonna feel me rolling into those surgeries. And yeah. And you're still here. And I'm still here. And, and, it, and it's, it's just incredible what we can do when we put our mind to work. Right, mind over matter, and yeah. you've done exactly that. And in your book, you open up about your struggles after your divorce. Like, why did you want to be so honest about everything? You know, I felt, I felt like I, I had to be honest, you know? Um, and the only way to tell the real story is to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, was my t it was just my time to just share what I went through. Uh, in a lot of ways, it was an apology to my family, to my ex-wife, to my children, to my mom, to my dad, kind of to everybody. Because you know, when, when, you're, when you're going through you know, multiple cancers back to back and your hormones are off and you're in surgeries and you have no thyroid, you do things you normally wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, not that it's an excuse, um, but I just, I wasn't the best guy during those years. Mm. You've been through a lot. Yeah, it was, wow. it was tough, it was real tough. Yeah, I'm glad uh, you can. But you know what, what really, what really broke me honestly was, was my divorce. Um, that was exponentially, more difficult than every issue in my entire life put together. And somehow, I got through it. You got through it. Yeah. And it's been changing for you. Yeah. And you're still here. Will you yeah. stick around for a little bit? Yes, I will. All right. More with Tariq. We'll be right back. We're back to Tariq and Lisa. New season of the show, The Flipping of Lisa. Tell us about season two. Oh my God, season two, you guys, I promise you, is off the hook, hands down. <laughs> like, no joke. Yeah. Not only the best TV I've been, ever been involved with, but hands down, the most beautiful houses we have ever done. I am so excited. I can sense no, no, your like, excitement. So excited. You're very passionate about it, right? Because you got me excited. I want to do some real estate now. It's a, whole nother, it's a whole nother level. What we wanted to do is make normal, everyday 1,200 square foot houses live like a multi-million dollar home. And with Heather's like high-end design look and feel with my math, <laughs> we, we're just making awesome houses. It sounds awesome. like it. We can't wait to see this. Now, home renovation can be a bit overwhelming, but you have questions that, you know, we want to ask your take on them. Is that sure. all right? Because I want to learn. I want to be a real estate agent too. Who better to ask? What room of the house should you put most of your budget in when flipping a home? Oh, when flipping a home. Kitchen and primary bathroom. Kitchen and primary bathroom. Those are like the most important. Yeah, now, if all of your house is from 1950 mm -hmm. and you want to remodel, you can't just go put in a new kitchen, right? So in that scenario, you want to do new carpet, new paint, new lighting, new handles, new counters, light cosmetic fixes that will make the house look a lot, lot newer. Okay, y'all listening? Mm -hmm. How firm should you be on your makeover budget? Well, if, it, if, you're, if it's my wife, there is no budget. Uh-oh. Um, you know, it, it all depends on, on <laughs> how much you want to spend. But here's the truth. If you, if you don't have a budget, you're going to spend way more than you want to. If you have a budget, you're still going to spend more than you want to, but it'll be a little more controlled. So I, I think it's important to identify your budget and try to stick with it. Okay. Stick with the budget. Stick with the budget. So is it important to invest in the backyard spaces? Depends on location. So in Southern mean? California, for example, indoor outdoor living, yes, right? So we want patios and fire pits and patio covers. In other markets around the country, outdoor living isn't as important, so no. Yeah, okay, that's a very good note. What's the best time of the year to start looking for a home? Well, that's a good question. So it's, you know, you're probably going to get the best deals during November, December, January. November, December, January. But taking notes. Okay. you're going to have more options to choose from later spring and summer. Mm. So it's a mixed bag, right? So you might get a better deal in November, December, but you have less houses to choose from. Or you buy in the summer, you get a house that you really, really want, but you might pay more. Okay. 
Um, how do you find houses to flip? Wow, so many different ways, you know? Um, the freeway is how most people start. It is picking up the phone, calling people that own houses, ask if they want to sell, calling real estate agents, ask if they have any distressed deals, sending text messages, sending emails, driving for dollars. You see, you're driving in a neighborhood, you see a, a house that needs work, you get out of your car, you knock on the door. Now, once you've done that and you've made some money, you, you can invest into marketing. So then there's print marketing, there's digital marketing, TV marketing, podcast, radio. There's so many different ways to generate opportunities. We got a lot of work to do if we're going to do this, y'all. Let's okay. go. I'm really listening. Let me get into this thing. Oh, my God. With your brand, you can get so many sellers calling <laughs> you to suck their house. You think I'm kidding. Okay. I'm taking notes from you. Uh. You know what? I got you a little gift for you and your son. Can I give it to you? Yes. Okay? So y'all can get ready for the baseball field. Oh, look at that. I love it. I love it. Change, I love train, your chest. Okay. Thank you for being here. Will you yeah, come back you. to see us? I appreciate you. Flip your life. How to find opportunities in distress is a baby. Everywhere books are sold. We'll be right back. I played Effie White in Dreamgirls over 18 years ago, and it never ceases to amaze me how her story continues to inspire people to this day. My next guest is proof of just that. From Haywood, California, please welcome Kendall Murray. Come on out. Oh my God, you wrote in saying how the character of Effie in Dreamgirls had a huge impact on your life. Tell me exactly how, what do you mean by that? Yeah, um, I just always saw Effie as like the epitome of like a strong black woman. Mm -hmm. I know we're living in a time where we're having conversations about like the strong black woman trope um, because black women often have to be seen more as like superheroes, which kind of dehumanizes them. But Effie is like further from that. We love her because she overcomes her obstacles. And I think more than anything, she like knew her self-worth. She knew she had a voice to kind of like inspire generations. And when she was in an environment where she wasn't being valued or appreciated, she left. Mm. And I think that's something I take with me everywhere I go. If I'm ever in a situation where I feel like I'm not being appreciated or my talents are being undervalued, that I can always just say no and leave. And that's amazing. I love that, <laughs> Effie. You got that out of Effie and she yeah. did that for you. Yeah. So why is representation in the media important to you? Yeah, as someone who grew up in a predominantly Asian and Hispanic community, okay. it was amazing to be able to learn about like different cultures but I wasn't able to find a community of people who look like me. Mm. Um, I, so I kind of grew up as someone who always had the TV on at home. And so watching shows like Meet the Browns or House of Pain, <laughs> it was like so fundamental, but got a little bit older and watched shows like Ant Farm and seeing like China Ann McClain as, even though she was like a music prodigy and like, I don't play instruments and God knows I can't sing, <laughs> but I still felt I could see myself in her. Yeah. And I think that's important for all groups of people, everyone should be able to see themselves in front of a television. I love the, your perspective and how you see it. And you are a junior at Stanford University. What is your major? Yeah, we have a really fun major called Symbolic Systems, mm. which is basically computer science and psychology mixed together. Nice. Um, as you can imagine, STEM really dominates our school, but I'm allowed to do a little bit of what I love. I love talking to people and being really creative and using the right side of my brain, but being technical and analytical and using the left side of my brain with like computer science. Wow, yeah. that's some Effie angle to <laughs> And Effie will be proud of you, okay. And I hear you have a passion to work in entertainment. What would you like to do in entertainment? Yeah, I'm still figuring out. I'm currently on a trip with a student group, Stanford Students in Entertainment. They and some of them there. are here today. Hey! Yeah. And it's like for undergrads interested in pursuing careers in entertainment. And so we've been here for a week, which has been really inspiring. Um, and I'm also like being kind of behind the scenes. Like this is, this is amazing. I'm having a blast <laughs> being in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, it's also uh, so crucial and critical in this industry. And so I'm actually with Black Stage, which is a black theater group that focuses on telling stories from a black perspective. That was actually started by Issa Rae and yes. Tracy Oliver when they were students there. Yeah. You're well on your way. Yeah, and coincidentally enough, um, we're actually working on a production of Dream Girls. Look at that. Yeah, and it's um, starting in about two weeks. Oh um, but it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of crazy. Do you think you'll play a role maybe? I, I'm currently yeah. production manager, so okay. I'm just kind of overseeing logistics planning, okay. working closely with the director and the producer, um, learning the ins and outs of the entertainment industry. We're doing it on a smaller scale, right? Small theater school group, but Nothing is it's, just. <laughs> One right. thing leads to the next. That's how I got to Effie, okay? Um, tell me, why is it so important for you to be here today? 
Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of already started. I think I'm just so inspired by you and the way you've been able to overcome obstacles um, kind of growing up and then hearing your story of being on American Idol, coming in like sixth or seventh. I feel like it can be so disheartening for people that they'd want to like quit, quit and leave the industry altogether. Mm -hmm. But you kept going. You knew you had a talent and you knew you had a voice and you know you wanted to share that with the world. And then, you know, a few Emmys, Grammys, Oscars, Tonys later, <laughs> you're here. Thank I you. Know, I know. And then the way that you now in a position to be able to open up opportunities for other people as like your role as a producer. I know A Strange Loop a couple yes, years ago. Yes. I feel like on paper, some people could see that story and be like, it's too niche, mm -hmm. but you gave it a chance. And I feel like it's emblematic of like the shift happening in Broadway and entertainment as a whole. And the fact that you have someone like me on the show. Wow. I saw Mike Epps was here one <laughs> time. I'm like, can I meet him? But it's also great that you have like smaller like students that are just, you know, passionate about this industry and you open up the space for them. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Listen. Kendall, I have to say, because think about it, someone once gave me a chance. When I started out in Dreamgirls, no one knew my name. You see what I'm saying? And we all have to start somewhere, and that's why it's important to me to use my platform to give others an opportunity, and that's the yeah. main thing I want to do here, to see someone else shine, because someone once gave me a chance. So, you know, I see stars in everyone, okay? So, <laughs> you keep doing what you are doing. Thank you. This is amazing and awesome to see, but before we go, I can't let you leave without giving you a little bit of the j hud swag from the happy place. Okay. okay, so you can remember how much time and how much you enjoyed your time here. Oh my gosh. You okay. keep doing what you're doing and Thank I'm sure you. you're gonna be running productions all over the place and you're gonna win your EGOT one day. I can oh feel gosh. it. <laughs> I know I stop when I see one. Okay, and I know some of your, your classmates are here too, so we got a bit of swag for them as well too. Amazing. Okay, y'all keep doing what you're doing, all right? We're proud of you and thank you for joining us and come back again and see us, all right? We will be looking for you. We'll be right back. Hope you all made it through April Fools in one piece because these deals at Morning Save are no joke. Thanks to more deals that sing. <laughs> Back again with us is my shopping bestie, Show Burke. Come on out, girl. You Jennifer, it's always so great to be back shopping with you and everyone at home can start shopping with us right now by checking out morningsave.com or by scanning the QR code below, okay? That's so, right. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's do it. Okay. All right. This is great. Let's just get a jump start on spring cleaning with this deal from Morning Save. It's the iHome auto vac robotic vacuum okay and it even has mapping technology that thing freaks my little dog out this vacuum suctions fine dust stubborn dirt pesky hair and more with ease okay plus hyperdrive automatically engages when the robot detects carpet jennifer isn't this a multitasker's dream? It is, and it's already gone. Look at it. <laughs> it has a mind of its own. Just clean <laughs> We've seen this <laughs> retail for as high as $300. With the deals that sing discount, you can get this for only $89.99. Yes! That's a savings of 70%. Careful, it's careful so about this. It's gonna get me. Okay. All I like right. it. Right. This is one of my favorites. So let's just get a head start on Mother's Day shopping, shall we? With our next product, it's the Savvy C one and a half carat Moissanite necklace. More is simply better with this piece. Okay. Mm. It features not one, not two, but three gorgeous Moissanite gemstones dangling from a sterling silver That's chain, lovely. okay? How gorgeous is that? I mean, yes. isn't this just so classy, Jennifer? It's so lovely. It's so beautiful. Anyway, so I'm we've seen this retail for as high as $200, okay? For the deals that sing discount, you can get one for only, guess. What? Only $49.99. That's a savings of 75%. Nice. Okay, we got this. 
We got this. Okay. It's still a clean and look at it. it. Oh yeah, it'll go forever. That's the good one. This gadget right here causes quite a stir in a good way, that is. It's the Chef Min Cordless Immersion Blender. Cut the cord, keep the power, and make blending a breeze with this portable blender, okay? So now there's no need to be near an outlet when mm -hmm. pureeing your favorite foods. So this blender also includes a blade guard to ensure safe storage. Jennifer, what are you blending these days, huh? I'm trying to figure it out right now, what I'm gonna blend and cook for y'all. Y'all want some neat? Yeah. Drink or something? I, I got you. <laughs> We've seen this retail for as high as $60. With a Deals That Sync discount, you can get this for only Oh my goodness, $19.99. I want it. That's a savings of 67%. Oh, oh, I'm taking a dip next time. Okay, okay. <laughs> Our last product has nearly 15,000 five star ratings online. It's the Vornado Flippy Fan Door Buster. So, mm. only three per person. The Flippy will definitely increase your cool factor and just in time for the warmer weather. This dual speed fan is great for your desk, at the office, on your nightstand or kitchen countertop, really. I mean, Jennifer, where would you use this thing? I know you're always cold, but you Yeah, I'm a, I get cold, but my son would love this. Mm -hmm. I prefer the heat. I, t I take this for the kid, though. Okay, we've seen this retail for as high as $35 with the deals that sing discount. You can get this for only guess. $15. That's the savings of 57%. Time. Okay, so these deals are so fantastic. You know what? I think we should treat one of our audience members with these great gifts. I agree. Let's so do it. So if you see your name on the screen, you're today's winner. Okay? Oh. Madame! Oh my goodness! You're the winner! Thank you, Cheryl. You're awesome! Thank oh my you. goodness! Thank you, thank you. Four deals that see! Make sure you check out Show's podcast and Sex and Lies for Ed. Spray tans anywhere you listen to podcasts. And to get these deals that sing before they're all gone, visit morningsave.com or scan the QR code below while supplies last. We'll be right back. Our next guest is the host of a new show helping Gen Zers tackle finance topics everyone can benefit from. From Victoria, British Columbia, please welcome Andini. You have a background in arts? Yes, well, I would call myself a 2020s Renaissance woman, which oh. basically means I have a lot of different interests in both the sciences and the arts. Nice. And I don't want to give up one or the other, so I'm trying to do both. You so, shouldn't have to. <laughs> so my uh, interests in the arts range from, I mean, my degree that I just finished earlier last year was in English literature and film studies. I studied acting in New York for a year. Uh, I model, I just finished directing a second music video for the artist Katie Landry, and I just do a variety of different things. Mm. Arts-wise, I was raised on silent films. Oh. I'm an old lady. I'm basically 80 years old, you just <laughs> you don't say. Um, and then also sciences, I competed in 10 science fairs while growing up. You're busy, you're amazing. <laughs> wow, okay. And you're an inventor? Yes. So I Tell us about that. My first toy was a box of transistors and other electronic parts. Uh, my mom was worried I was going to eat them, and I was like, well, I, I couldn't talk, but okay. my dad was like, she'll be fine. Uh, and then from there, I would take my hot glue gun and garbage from around the house and piece together my very first inventions, which of course never worked, but the idea of taking the resources around me and piecing them together to make something better kind of just came out of necessity. Tell us about your new show, Your World on Money. Yes, so I have a show called... And now a show, come on. Uh, it's called Your World on Money. Uh, it is a free online series that you can watch on millionstories.com and it's all about personal finance, the basics of personal finance uh, for Gen Zers. Um, and I, you know, I went to school and I didn't learn anything about mm -hmm. how to do your taxes or like what is a budget. So we wanted to create a series that was educative and entertaining and got people invested and excited about their personal finances instead of scared and intimidated. That's awesome. <laughs> Why are people afraid of this topic? I think, again, because 
maybe Gen Z, which I am part of. Um, I was thinking that. <laughs> uh, I think Gen Z is a little more open now about talking about their personal finances. You know, I have conversations with my friends about how much rent or what they're earning, but I think previous generations and our parents' generations were a bit more private about it, mm -hmm. and we also just didn't learn it in school. And I think it should be part of the curriculum, honestly, for uh, every school. It's uh, a part of life, right? Yeah, because, you know, like, I learned calculus in school, but I don't use that now. Uh, but do I still know how to do my taxes by myself? No, my parents still help me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And did it open your eyes to understanding finances? Yes, yeah, I, I definitely was learning along with the audience as we were filming. Uh, I got to interview so many amazing experts. We were also asking people at Experian who really know what they're talking about. And I did a lot of man on the street interviews in New York City, just asking people my age, of all age ranges really, what did they know about taxes or what was credit and all these things. And the more I talked to people, the more I was like, nobody knows. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. Yeah. So it made me feel less alone. And so when I did get to talk to these experts, I really got to ask them the questions that I had always wondered about, but never found a place really to learn about it that felt accessible and exciting. You're on your way. I am blown away. Will you stick around? Yes, I will stick around. All right. More with Andini when we return. We'll be right back. We're back with Andini, host of Your World on Money. What is it that you want viewers to take away from the episodes? I want viewers to feel inspired and excited about their personal finances instead of intimidated or like afraid to open the banking app, which I have been there. Um, and just excited to be like, I'm empowered this year and I'm going to take charge of my personal finance instead of living in fear of not knowing what's going on, which a lot of us go through life doing that, so. That is so true. Yeah. And I hear you have some tips for us. I do have some tips. I would love to hear all about them. Well, tip number one. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> tip number one, always put some money away for emergencies. I think COVID kind of taught us this, that we need some savings because you never know what's going to be happening. Uh, and there are a lot of banking apps that kind of automatically deposit a small amount of your check each month into a savings account and you just don't touch it. Just watch it, let it grow, because you never know. You never know. You never know. Keep it for a rainy day. Yeah. Uh, tip number two is to start thinking about retirement earlier on. Uh, actually, after we filmed an episode about retirement, I started with my mom a small account where I just try and put monthly just a little bit of money for retirement. And again, if there's a rainy day, you can pull from it, but hopefully not. Uh, I like to think of saving for retirement as future self-care, you know? Taking care of future self-care. Future self-care, I like yeah. that. Tip number three is, this one's for me. So think hard before you tap your credit card. Um, I'm gonna take that one for myself, <laughs> okay? I think a lot of us just go, oh yeah, I can get it. Um, and <laughs> I really need to calm down, as many of us, stop being Delulu about what we can buy that month, you know, especially if you don't know where the Delulu. money is coming from okay. to pay off the purchase you're about to make, don't buy it or sleep on it. Mm. So that's a good one. Uh, tip number four, uh, pay off your credit card as soon as you can. Okay. Uh, especially because you want to build a good credit score, obviously. Um, and even if you're making smaller purchases, then you know you have that ability to pay it off straight away. Once you get home that night, open up the banking app and just pay it off. Um, and you know, when you have a good credit score, it's essential for getting those kind of future loans or getting approved for apartments or houses. So keep check of it and pay off your credit card. I have made mistakes where I have not paid off my credit card on time and I've gone locked out of the account and then gone, what's happened? I don't understand. Uh, and then I was like, ah, yes, I and forgot to pay off. He learned the hard way. Learned the hard way. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and number five, know your credit score and keep track of it. It's kind of like a personal finance resume, right? So creditors, creditors will give you better rates based on your score. So you want to try and keep it up there, keep it high. Um, yeah, so those are my five tips. That's helpful. Very, very helpful. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much it's for having so me. so informative. Oh my God. To find out more about Ingrini and how to understand your finances better, please visit our show's website. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.